All right, so uh, welcome to another exciting lesson in uh, pre-calculus here. As we go through, we're going to start off with a new unit, 11, uh, chapter 11, which is sequences and series. And uh, we're going to go through starting with section 1, and that's uh, sequences and summation notation. This is going to be broken up in two videos, one talking about sequences and the other one about summation notation. So we'll kind of go through it that way and uh, follow along and try out the examples as we go through them. So a sequence is basically a set of numbers written in a specific order. They're going to have some sort of pattern. Some of you guys might find this pretty easy. I hope you do. Um, we look at each pattern such as A1, A2, A3. This little number here, the 1 and the 2, that's called the index. <clears throat> that just tells us what term it is. A is a general letter that we use for that term and, and kind of go from there. So A sub 1 is the first term, A2 is the second term, A sub n is the nth term. So we're going to go through and do that. Um, since every natural number n, there's a corresponding number a sub n, and we can define a sequence as a function. An example, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, that keeps going on forever, that's why the dot 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 is there, that would be an example of a sequence. We can uh, write that sequence in terms of terms like that, or as a uh, formula a sub n equals 2 to the n. If this is the case and I wanted to find out say the 10th term a sub 10 I would just plug it in say 2 times 10 and that's 20. So the 10th term in this sequence is going to be 20. That's helpful if I want to find say the 100th term. So I'd say 2 times 100 and that would give me 200. So 200 is the 100th term of that sequence. And we can do this for any uh, formula that we have. For example, this one here is, says find the first five terms and the 150th term of the sequence defined by the following formula. a sub n equals 8n minus 2. <clears throat> first term, really simple, a sub 1. So we're just going to plug it in. 8 times 1 minus 2. That's 8 minus 2, which is 6. So the first term is 6. Second term. A times or 8 times 2 minus 2, 16 minus 2, that's 14. Third term, A times 3 minus 2, 24 minus 2, 22. A sub 4 is the fourth term, 8 times 4 minus 2, that's 30. A sub 5 is the fifth term, that's 40 minus 2, which is 38. <coughs> and then the last term, or the 150th term, I should say, is 8 times 150 minus 2. I'm going to grab my calculator real quick. Can't do that in my head. So 8 times 150 is 1,200 minus 2 is 1,198. So there's the first five terms and the 150th term. Okay, another example. <clears throat> C sub n equals n squared minus 4. Again, first term is going to be 1 squared minus 4. Well, 1 squared is 1, minus 4 is negative 3. Second term, 2 squared minus 4. That's 4 minus 4, which is 0. Third term is going to be c sub 3, so that's 3 squared minus 4, or 9 minus 4, which is 5. Fourth term, <coughs> It's going to be 4 squared minus 4, whoops, and that's 16 minus 4, which is 12. And the fifth term is going to be 5 squared minus 4, which is 21. For the 100th term, if we had to go through and write out 100 terms, that would be a lot of writing. But here I can say 100 squared minus 4. 100 squared is 10,000 minus 4. So it's going to be 9,996. That's C sub 100. All right. So there's a couple examples. Now, these are all called explicit formulas. You can find any number by just plugging it in. We also have what's called a recursive formula. A recursive formula looks something like this. A sub 1 equals 4, and A sub n equals 2, A sub n minus 1 plus 5. Well, <clears throat> this a sub n minus 1 right here 
means that I'm going to take the term before. If this is the nth term, this is the term before. So I know the first term is 4. My second term is going to be the first term times 2 plus 5. So a sub 2 is going to equal 2 a sub 1 plus 5. Well, a sub 1 is right there. It says 4. So 2 times 4 plus 5, which is 8 plus 5, or 13. So that's 13. <coughs> Next one is a sub 3. a sub 3 is going to say 2, a sub 2, plus 5. a sub 2 is this a sub n minus 1 for n, or a sub 3. So we got 2 times 13 plus 5, 26 plus 5, which is 31. So there's my next one. Uh, a sub 4 is the fourth term. That's going to be 2 a sub 3, the term before it, plus 5. 2 times 31 plus 5, that's 62 plus 5, 67. And then the fifth term is a sub 5. So that's 2 times the fourth term plus 5. 2 times 67 plus 5, that's 133 plus 5, which is 138. Okay, basically multiply this by 2, add 5. 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 That's how it works. You're using the terms before it. And that's a recursive formula. All right. <coughs> The next difficult part is trying to come up with a formula for this stuff. Um, for example, this one here, we have the first term, second term, third term, fourth term. And I'm hoping that you can see that that's 5 to the first, that's 5 to the second, that's 5 to the third, that's 5 to the fourth. And so really, you could say that this is a sub n equals 5 to the n. But there's one small problem. This one's positive, negative positive, negative. So the sign alternates. So one of the things that we can do with an alternating sign <coughs> is do something with like a negative 1. If it's negative 1 to the n power, then we're going to do negative 1 to the first, and we're going to say that's negative 1. That would make that a negative 5. But we don't want it to be negative 1 to the first, we want it to be just positive 1, so I'm going to say that. So this one's kind of tricky. Probably shouldn't have started off with this one, but we got negative 1 to the n minus 1 times 5 to the n. Plug it in. See if it'll work for these. If I want the first term, I'm going to say negative 1 to the 1 minus 1 times 5 to the 1. 1 minus 1 is 0. That's negative 1 to the 0 times 5 to the first. That's 1 times 5 to the first, which is 5. That works. You probably do the same thing for a sub 2. We're going to do negative 1, 2 to the minus 1, times 5 squared. That's going to be negative 1 times 25, negative 25. So that works out pretty well. Same thing here. Let's just make these all positives just for, for today. And if we do that, we have the first term is 1 third. The second term is 1 ninth. How are those related? Well, I'm multiplying by 1 third on the bottom, or this is 3 to the first, 3 to the second, 3 to the third, 3 to the fourth. You want to see what that index is in the term number, and you can see how is 1 related to 1 third? How is 2 related to 1 ninth? How is 3 related to 1 27th? And so I can say a sub n equals 1 third to the nth power, because 1 to the first is 1, 3 to the first is 3, that's 1 third. 1 ninth squared, or 1 third squared, is 1 ninth. 1 third to the third is 1 27th, and so on and so on. And so that is um, our sequences and some of the formulas there. I know it ran a little bit long, but check out the next video too about sum summation notation and uh, try out the practice problems.